Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another exciting pre-alpha teaser of Telepath Tactics. You might be wondering at what you are looking at directly in front of you. This is a work in progress by the artist Ben Marion of the new title screen graphics. Um, it is looking pretty sweet, so I wanted to share it with you. Uh, from left to right, you can see the stone golem, the swordsman, carrying a flag, uh, the lizard man kind of prepping for a swing. You've got the spearman crouched in front, the cavalier on top of his praying mantis mount trying to lance a sprigate in the center, and you've got an assassin scaling a bronze golem in the back, a shadowling about to creep up on a bowman, and a pyrokineticist launching a pyroblast at the spearman. Pretty awesome. This is by no means done, but it looks so cool, I just wanted to share it with you. Um, that is the first of many really cool pieces of news that have happened in Telepath Tactics since I last did a pre-alpha teaser. I'm about to show you some of the rest of it. Folks, if you'll join me here in the new match menu for just a moment, I think you'll notice a few new things. First, there are now map previews. Every single map has its own little preview. It is super, super easy to take a preview shot of any given map. All you do is open up the map and hit Control F12, and the game will automatically take a perfectly sized and formatted shot of your map to put in the little previews folder, and it will load it whenever you select a map from this menu. Very exciting stuff. Also, you might notice there's a brand new uh, option here, free for all slash teams. That is because there is now team matches supported. So, two versus two, or if you have a large enough map, two versus two versus two, right? And you can sort of configure that by setting players to none or, you know, setting uh, players to human or CPU. If you want, you can do two on one, right? This is two versus one right here. Um, similarly, if you want a match to be really lopsided, you can have three versus one, right? So this would be me playing with two CPU allies against a fourth player who would be a human. Pretty cool stuff, I think you'll agree. I'm pretty excited about it. Uh, but folks, that is not even the coolest thing that I wanted to show you in this video. I mean, there's even more stuff than that. And it just goes on and on, like there's now a, uh, oh, for the love of God, go away. There are so much new stuff in the game right now. Like, for instance, there's now a scripting system attached to the dialogue, uh, the dialogue system in the game, so that you can create your brand new, uh, very own cutscenes where characters animate, rotate to talk to each other, you can remove them from the scene, you can add new characters to the scene, you can kill characters, add characters to the army as part of the cutscene, etc., etc. Uh, it's just super cool. But even that's not the coolest thing I wanted to show you. I'm going to show you the really, really most awesome, I think, uh, thing that's been added to the game. You might notice something, folks. Characters are actually animating now. Yes, that's right. This game now has an animation system. And as you can see, the character movement animations are all in the game. Um, right now, the computer is handling this itself. But rest assured, it also works when humans are playing as well. I don't know about you, but I'm super impressed with the work that Lauren Whiting did on these animations. I think they look fantastic. I especially love that shadowing animation. Where he's, you can see the smoke sort of streaming behind him, and he's doing some creepy little thing with his fingers. In fact, I'm going to show that again just because I love that animation so much. Look at that. <laughs> uh, that's my favorite. Um, but yeah, I mean, all of these look super awesome, I think. Like, I love the stone golems, uh, animation. I really like these spriggate, too, the way their wings flap. I just think it looks really cool. So, there you have it, folks. Um, Animations are now in the game. One really cool thing about them is that the way the game handles it, um, there's actually only one set of sprite sheets for the uh, for each character type, right? So 
it's actually the Violet team, right? Every every character gets a set of sprite sheets as if they're on the Violet team, and then the game automatically, automatically you might say, uh, changes their colors. So it automatically palette swaps this to red in code for the red team, to blue and violet in code for the blue team, and so on and so forth for every single team color. So it's really easy to mod in new character classes with their own custom animations. Pretty cool stuff. You might be uh, you might be a little surprised at just how smoothly all this runs. Um, this uses blitting. I was actually kind of shocked when I first coded this in at just how smooth it was because I actually had to slow down the animations in code because without me slowing them down, it actually ran too quickly. Like it it looked like one of those weird old timey movies where there's like a chase scene and it's supposed to be comedic and they're all just like running in double time. So there's actually a delay built into the code to make the animations run less quickly because they just run like at the speed of light otherwise. It's kind of awesome. Uh, blitting, for those of you who don't know, is just taking um, frames out of a sprite sheet, copying the pixels and then just posting it on the screen. And, I mean, as you can see, it it runs really, really smoothly, and it looks really good. So that's the animation engine, folks. Uh, right now, only the move animations are in the game, but we are working on the remainder of the animations right now, as I speak. Uh, I'm really looking forward to getting all the attack animations in there and finishing up the animation engine, because it is going to look super, super slick. Uh, you may recall the game was originally planned for release kind of soonish. Like it was originally planned for release in winter 2012. That was before I added in the single player campaign by fan request. As a general rule, when you add in something that huge, it is going to push back the whole project. So this project is now going to be released in 2013. That is when you can expect Telepath Tactics to drop. Um, and there's a good reason for that. When you got, you know, when the scope of your game expands dramatically, and you have a release date already set based on, you know, it being a much smaller game, if you stick to that release date, what inevitably is going to happen is you're going to release the game, and it's going to be either incomplete or you're going to have half-assed it. And speaking personally, I don't like half-assing things. I want this game to be full-assed. Think about that for a second. Anyway, folks, um, this game will be released in 2013, and I don't know about you, but I am super looking forward to getting it out there and seeing what you guys all think of it, because I don't know about you, but I think this game looks pretty sweet. And I know it's pretty sweet, because I've been playing it the entire time that I've been developing it. Folks, there is a very high likelihood that I'm going to run a Kickstarter on this to help uh, fund the development. Now, you're probably thinking, Craig, you already have all these awesome assets, and the engine already works fine. Why do you need to fund development? And the answer is, I want to have more assets in the game. Um, this game supports modding, and it supports custom single-player campaigns. And that's great, but when I hired my artist, uh, I only had enough money to really pay him to make the assets that I would need for multiplayer. So I've sort of been making do with what I have from multiplayer in the single player campaign, but I want to have a little more flexibility. So for instance, every human character class right now in the game is only one gender. So every swordsman is a woman, right? Every spearman is a man. Every bowman is a man, every crossbowman is a woman. That's kind of cool, but I don't know, if people are going to be modding this game, I can't really expect them to make alternate gender variations of every single character class, right? That, that's kind of up to me to do it and make sure that it's consistent across all the copies of the game. I also want to have, you know, some like NPC sprites and maybe some extra tile sets. You know, th there's a whole bunch of little wish list items that I've compiled, so I'm probably going to run a Kickstarter for this game at some point in the pretty near future. 
and you should keep an eye out for that. Anyway, folks, that is pretty much all I wanted to show you in this video. There's still a million more things I could show you about this game, but for now, rest assured, uh, there is just a lot going on here that I just haven't shown you yet, and it's all really, really awesome. If you want, if you want to stay abreast of the latest developments in the game, so to speak, I strongly recommend that you follow me. That's at Sinister Design on Twitter. At Sinister Design, that is my Twitter handle. I post updates about the game regularly on there. So if you're curious to know how development is going, you should really follow me. Um, also, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, because that is where I upload all of these little pre-alpha teasers. And if you're subscribed, the second I upload one, you'll be the first to know. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button, follow me on Twitter, and that's about it, folks. Thank you so much for watching this pre-alpha teaser. I'm really excited to bring this game out and letting you all get a crack at it. I'll see you guys next time.